Welcome to this Wise Owl Answers video. This question came in on the Wise Owl website, and as the title of the video suggests, this viewer was interested in how to copy data from a CSV file hosted on a website into an Excel workbook. The technique he's gone for is to use keyboard shortcuts to select all the data, copy it, and then paste it into a worksheet, which isn't necessarily the best way to achieve this, but it does provide a nice starting point for this video. So we'll begin by looking at how to get the send keys method to work, then I'll give you two further options and then you can see which one you like the best. So let's get started. So here's the data in question displayed in a Chrome browser window. And you can see from the address bar, the URL of the file shows it's a CSV file hosted on GitHub user content. All I've done in Excel terms so far is created a new workbook, saved it as a macro enabled file, and then in the Visual Basic Editor, created a new module with a subroutine that fires up a new instance of Chrome and navigates to that URL. Of course, all this is dependent on having a reference for the Selenium type library set. So you can see I've done that here already. And if you're not sure how to get that set up, then of course we do have a set of videos which explain that. So if you need a bit of a refresher or a bit of help getting that done, then this is the playlist to look at. Just to demonstrate that the basic code I've written so far works, if I just run that subroutine, we ought to end up with a new instance of Chrome navigating to that CSV file on GitHub user content. Now let's add the code that lets us send key presses to the Chrome browser. If we head back to the Visual Basic Editor, we'll start by declaring a variable that can hold an instance of the Selenium keys class. So I'm going to say dim ks as selenium.keys. We'll then need to create a new instance of the keys class, and there's a couple of different ways of doing that. I'm going to do it explicitly by saying set ks equals new selenium.keys. Once I've done that, I can send keystrokes to the Chrome browser by saying cd.sendkeys. If I just think about what I would do to select all the data and copy it to the clipboard, the two keyboard shortcuts I'd use would be Control A followed by Control C. So the first parameter of the send keys method lets you specify either a key or a modifier key. So I'm going to specify the modifier key control. So I'll say ks.control followed by a comma and then the key that I would like to press in combination with the control key, which will be the letter A to select all. And I want to duplicate that. In fact, I'm just going to copy and paste that line and then change the key that I'm going to press in combination with the control key to the letter C. Even without pasting the data into a worksheet, we should be able to test that our keyboard shortcuts are working. If we run the subroutine, we'll open up a new instance of Chrome, and it should be fairly obvious that we've now selected all the data. And if we've selected everything, we should also have copied everything to the clipboard. So let's just head back to the Excel worksheet. And if we just choose to paste something, we should find that all the data was indeed copied to the clipboard, and we've now pasted it into a worksheet. A nice way to finish off this example then would be to automate the pasting of the data into a new worksheet and then tidy up the results by splitting the data into different columns and then maybe changing the column widths as well. To get that to work, let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor and we'll declare a new variable to hold a reference to a worksheet. So we'll say dimws as worksheet. We'll then create our new worksheet object. I'll say setws equals this workbook.worksheets.add. And then after we've copied all the data, I'm going to use a with block to refer to range A1 on the worksheet we've created. So with ws.range A1. I'll close off my with block with an end with statement. And then inside there, I'm going to say dot paste special. And then I'm going to refer to the current region property and apply the text to columns method to that. I'm going to set the comma parameter of that method to be equal to true. And then finally, I'm going to refer to the current region, the entire column property, and then the auto fit method. Having done all that, we can run the subroutine again, and we ought to end up with a new copy of Chrome opened up, all the data copied from that CSV file, and then back in Excel, a brand new worksheet with all of the data in there. For the next example, we're going to access the text property of the element which contains the CSV data. So this is a lot more like the way you would scrape data from a web page. If we head back to the Chrome browser that has the CSV file open in it, I can right click on any part of the CSV data and choose to inspect it. And in the elements list, I'll find that all of that data is contained in a 
pre element, a pre formatted text element. If I expand that, there's all the data. So I can just treat this like any regular web page, looking for elements or tags with the pre name. So if I head back to the Visual Basic Editor, I think I'd like to keep the original version of this subroutine. So I'm going to make a copy of it and paste it in just at the top of the module. I'm then going to change the name of it, of course. So let's call this one uh, write to text file or something along those lines. Then there's a whole bunch of stuff we can get rid of here. So we're not going to need to have a new worksheet or a keys variable. So let's get rid of those. I'll get rid of the worksheet. Um, set worksheet variable as well. Get rid of the lines which send keys and all the uh, the width block which tidies up, tidies up the data. And then we're going to have another variable at the top which allows us to hold a reference to a Selenium web element. So let's say dim e as selenium.webElement. Then once I've loaded the URL, I can say set e equals cd.findElement by pick your favorite element finding strategy. I'm going to go with by CSS and then in some round brackets and double quotes, write in the word pre, close the double quotes in the round brackets. And then just for demonstration purposes, I won't be able to see everything here. I'm just going to say debug.print e.text. So it will help if I can actually see the immediate window for the debug.print statement to work. If I head to the view menu at the top of the screen and choose immediate window. So I'll run the subroutine again. And when we load the page and have a look in the immediate window, once it's finished, we can see all of that CSV data being printed out. Not quite all of it. The immediate window does have a limit to how much it can display, but you can see it is getting data. Next, we can write all this text into a new text file. And to do this, I'm going to use a Microsoft scripting runtime object library. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how this works, simply because we've already covered this in previous videos in the Excel VBA introduction playlist. So the files and folders and text files videos are your reference points if you need a bit of a reminder of how this works. To start with, in the Visual Basic Editor, I'm going to go to the Tools menu and choose References. And then I'm going to scroll through the list to find the Microsoft Scripting Runtime. I always go past it the first time, but there it is. So make sure you place a check in the box. Once you've done that and you've clicked OK, we can declare a couple of new variables. So just above the Selenium web element variable, I'm going to declare one called FSO as a scripting dot file system object. And then below that, dim TS as scripting dot text stream. What I can then do once I've captured a reference to that element, I'm going to create a new instance of the file system object class. So I'm going to say set FSO equals, I'll try to say equals new scripting dot file system object, and then create a new text file or rather open a text file. I'm going to say set TS equals FSO dot open text file. I'm going to provide a file name which doesn't currently exist, but one of the nice things about the open text file method is it allows you to create the file if it doesn't already exist. The file name, I'd like to place this in the same folder as the workbook I'm currently working on. So I'm going to say this workbook.path and then concatenate to the end of that a backslash and then the name of the file, I'll call it, what should we call it? Let's call it COVID, which is what the data is all about, COVID vaccinations, .csv. I can then close the double quotes. I want to state that the file is going to be created for writing. So it's going to replace any existing information in there if there is an existing version of the file. And then I'm going to set the create parameter to true. So it will be created if it doesn't already exist. I can then close the round brackets. And then rather than saying debug.print e.text, I can say ts.write and then pass into that write method everything from the text property of that element. What I then need to do is make sure I've closed down the text stream. So I'm going to say ts.close. And then just to check that I don't already have that text file in the same folder as this workbook. So I've got the uh, the Selenium copy CSV data file. Another file will need a little bit later on in the video. But if I head back to the subroutine now and I choose to run this one, it opens up a new instance of Chrome and then it writes all that text data into a new text file in the same folder. 
A nice way to finish off this example would be to add a line of code which automatically opens up that CSV file as an Excel workbook at the end. And that's really simple to do back in the Visual Basic Editor. After we've closed down the text stream, we can say workbooks.open, if we can spell workbooks, and then we want to pass in the same file name that we've just constructed. So this workbook.path and covid.csv. So we can copy and paste that. And then if we run the subroutine again, we'll see we get a new instance of Chrome opened up. And at the end, we've got our CSV file opened up as an Excel workbook. Now, both of the techniques we've looked at so far rely on us opening up a new instance of Google Chrome and then navigating to the URL of that CSV file in the browser itself. But if we already have the URL of the file that contains the data we want, we don't actually need to involve Chrome at all. We've got at least two much easier ways to get this data. So for the next example, we're going to use something called a query table. And again, I won't go into a huge amount of detail here simply because we've already covered query tables in an earlier video. So if you need a reference or a reminder or you haven't seen it before, part 46, querying web pages using query tables. As a starting point, I'm going to copy the first subroutine that we wrote earlier on. So let's copy and paste the copy and paste subroutine. And again, I'm going to stick this in back up at the top just to make it easier for me to show you what's going on. We'll change the name of the subroutine. Let's call this one using query tables or a query table. And then I'm going to get rid of a few different bits of code here. So let's get rid of the send keys methods. We won't need those. I'm going to keep the line that has the URL in it just for the moment. We can get rid of the cd.start method. We won't need that. And then the two set statements for the Chrome driver and the keys and the variable that holds a reference to selenium.keys. Then we're going to add another variable that holds a string. I'm just going to call this one URL as string and then modify this cd.get line to say uh, URL equals and then the URL we want to get. Next, we're going to create a query table object. And to do that, we're going to start with a variable to hold a reference to it. So let's say dim QT as a query table. And then after we've created our new worksheet and we've captured our URL in that variable, we're going to set QT to be equal to ws.querytables.add. And then in some round brackets, there's a couple of parameters we want to set. So the connection parameter, first of all, let's set that on the next line. I forgot my continuation character, excuse me, there we go. And then I'm going to say connection colon equals. And then in some double quotes, I'm going to write URL followed by a semicolon and then concatenate to the end of that the value held in our URL variable. After that, I'm going to set the destination parameter. So let's say destination colon equals and I'm going to refer to the worksheet we've created and range a one on there. Close a couple of sets of round brackets at the end of that and that will be sufficient to create our very basic query table. Now there's one important thing we need to do with a query table in order for it to retrieve the data and that's to refresh it. So I'm going to say qt.refresh and then the additional code down there just to tidy up the results. Although, of course, we won't need to paste anything this time. So let's get rid of the paste special method as well. One final thing I'd like to do just before I run this code is make sure that the query table has had a time to refresh before we try to tidy up the results. So to do that after the refresh method, we can refer to the background query parameter. So I'm going to say background query and set that to be equal to false. So that means that the rest of the code won't continue until the query has finished refreshing. So having done all that, we can run the subroutine again and we ought to end up this time with another new worksheet. And it's going to have the same data in it, of course, but we've done all that without opening up an instance of Chrome at all. At the beginning of the video, I said I was going to show you the keyboard shortcut technique followed by two further options, but I'm actually going to include a fourth bonus option just to make your choice of technique that little bit more difficult. If we have the URL of a file, we can download it directly by passing that URL into a function. The problem is the function doesn't exist natively in VBA. We have to declare it first from a DLL. 
Now again, I'm not going to go into lots of detail here, not because I'm lazy, I promise, simply because we've covered it in lots of detail in a previous video. So in this case, it's part 49, downloading files from websites. So if you want the gory details of how this function works, that's the video to reference. For this video, we're just going to import a module that contains that function's declaration. So I'll make sure there's a link in the video description so you can download this yourself. I'm going to right click into the Project Explorer and choose to import a file. So it's in the same folder as my, uh, my VBA uh, Excel workbook. I'm going to double click on the URL download uh, to file. If I then double click on the module that I've just imported, that's the declaration of the function. So it's called URL download to file, and there are five parameters. We're only going to pass a, an actual value to two of the parameters, the URL and the file name. All of the other three parameters are just going to receive zero. So to make use of this function to download our file, let's create a new subroutine. I'm going to call mine download file. In here, I'm going to declare a variable. I'm going to call it URL as string and then a second variable called destination file also as a string. I'll copy and paste from module one the line which sets the URL for the using query tables subroutine. Head back to module two and then just paste that in. And then for the destination file variable, let's say destination file equals, and I'd like this file stored in the same folder as this workbook. So we can say this workbook.path and then concatenate to the end of that, backslash COVID, and then let's just put something to the end of that to distinguish it from the original COVID file that we created, COVID from URL.csv. Okay, once we've done that, we can call on the URL download to file function. So we can say URL download to file. The first parameter is going to be zero. The second parameter is going to be the URL of our source CSV file. The third parameter is going to be our destination file path, and then two further zeros for the final two parameters. And that's it, basically. That's all you need once you've declared the function. So just to check in the folder at the moment, we just have our original COVID CSV file. But if we head back here, back here and run this subroutine, we should see fairly swiftly, we get a new CSV file, COVID from URL. And just as we did in the previous example, we could have added the code to open up that CSV file. Um, so let's just quickly do that. Let's say workbooks.open and then this workbook.path and COVID from URL. So we can copy and paste that, run the subroutine again, and we'll see that the file has indeed been opened up. So there you go, four different options for getting CSV data from a URL. Hopefully you found at least one of those options useful. Feel free to let me know in the comments below which one's your favourite. And if you can think of any others, feel free to post about that as well. I'd like to hear about them. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.